Hey, we've just been talking about galaxies and superclusters and these huge structures that we find in the universe. And the, one of the questions that people have struggled with for forever, really, is kind of where, where did we come from? And, and uh, how did all this stuff appear? And so today's podcast will kind of get to the heart of that. Um, what scientists think happened is sort of at the beginning. We're going to begin to, to say uh, and talk about what scientists and astronomers have called or has been sort of popularly known as the Big Bang. And so that's where we're headed today is to the Big Bang or the beginning um, of it all. So let's begin that conversation right now. So this is the discussion of what's called cosmology, the study of the cosmos. All right, ology, by the way means the study of, and we're talking about the cosmos. Okay, so what is cosmology? Is the study of the structure and the evolution of the universe as a whole. So the entire universe, not each individual star, not each individual galaxy, but the entire piece. Okay, questions like how big is the universe? What shape is it? How old is it? How did it form? And what will happen in the future? So it's kind of sort of really big, big picture. And so here we have, of course, a very cool picture. In our cool picture of what we see, we see lots of galaxies. I just love these pictures when we have these fields, and that's a galaxy of billions of stars. Well, there's another one right there. And, oh, there's another one, and another one. These are just, some of these are stars, but you can clearly see um, some galaxies um, all around. So you point the telescopes up there, you zoom it in, and you say, oh my gosh, there are so many galaxies out there. Did they all come from something? Well, that's what we want to talk about right now. Well, let's make some observations right now. All right. What do we seem to kind of know right now? First of all, something weird is the universe is expanding. Expanding. Remember we said in a uh, couple of podcasts ago, or maybe even the last podcast, I forget. We said that the universe, or all the galaxies are spreading away from the Milky Way. Hmm, I wonder what that is. All right. We also know that it's filled with very low energy called background radiation. So there's like a bunch of energy out there that's just sort of hanging out, heat. Um, the radiation and expansion imply the universe began some 15 billion years ago. It began as a hot, dense, violent burst of matter and energy, which is now called, well, it's called the Big Bang. So you might have heard about the, the Big Bang. And I'll bet there's some misconceptions about what you think the Big Bang was. Okay, so let's kind of go there. All right. So in the early years of the 20th century, astronomers envisioned the universe as a static place with only a, the Milky Way and a few companions. So we thought, okay, there's the Milky Way galaxy and we've got a few companions. Okay, that, that's kind of what they thought. Okay, early 20th century. It's like in 1900 around the 1900s. But then around the 1920s, they realized the universe was filled with other galaxies, millions of light years apart, and the universe was expanding. They said, oh my gosh, it's not just like, you know, 10 or 20 galaxies, but it's like millions of galaxies, or millions of light years apart. And the universe was expanding. Hmm. Okay. So other things they noticed. No matter which way you look, ignoring the zone of avoidance, that's not important, you know what ignore it, okay? You see about the same number of galaxies. Hmm. The galaxies are not spread smoothly, but they clump in groups. They're grouped, they're clumpy, all right? But this smooth clumping, if you will, there's clump, but in groups, implies a similar distributions for the whole universe. Hmm. And we can contrast this with the sky's Milky Way. So they're beginning to look at all these things. So, so here's, if you will, a picture of the universe where each of these is a star. Let's not talk too much about this thing called the zone of avoidance, but it's kind of equally distributed in clumps. Mm. So that's sort of a hmm thing, right? So okay, so what does that tell us? So in general, a galaxy obeys Hubble's law. Okay, remember learning about Hubble's law a couple of podcasts ago? The speed of recession is proportional to the galaxy's distance. That means that uh, big fancy word, that means the ones that are further away, the further away ones, they, they're moving faster than the ones that are closer together. Okay, now this is a very important concept, this um, second bullet on this page. A lot of people get a misunderstanding. The motion away is due to the expansion of space itself. Not like bomb fragments going through the air, but like buttons attached to an expanding balloon. So in essence, what they're thinking here is that, if you will, the button on the balloon here is a, um, well, it's a galaxy. And what's happened is the entire balloon has been blown up. And the galaxies, of course, are further apart here than they are here, right? And so what's going on is the entire balloon is being filled up. So at one point, the balloon was very, very, very small. And then the balloon got a little bit bigger. 
and then the balloon got bigger and bigger and see and then the galaxies that were on there okay are now further apart so instead of the galaxies necessarily getting further apart space itself space itself is expanding that seems weird so the air around us is expanding yes you're getting bigger kind of yes okay it's it's a kind of a weird concept it's hard to kind of wrap your mind around the concept that space itself is expanding not just um, not just things moving apart but moving apart is an indicator of space expanding all right this kind of leads us to the concept of the age of the universe running the universe's expansion backward all right so if we know that it's you know the furthest galaxy is out here let's think of a of us actually let's go back a slide if we know the furthest galaxy is out here and then we were to shrink the balloon back and become more like this when were all of the galaxies well together this was actually a very controversial subject when it was first came out a lot of people did not like the idea that the universe a lot of astronomers had a beginning um, because well frankly it had some kind of religious context or con connotations I should say that there was actually a beginning they wanted the universe to some that maybe the sort of non-religious astronomers they didn't want the universe to have a beginning and uh, they wanted it to always be now the question is now they said I think there is a beginning and it goes backwards and plines that somehow all of the stuff of the universe you and me um, our solar system the stars the Milky Way and then all the galaxies were once in a very small volume that was once called, and we call this the primeval atom, that everything was once very small. In fact, smaller than the size of a pin. Now, I can't wrap my mind around this, frankly. This, this is just kind of hard to comprehend, that you could compress me to the size, well, of smaller than a pin. Now, me, that's not so bad, I guess, but take the entire world. Well, the world, not, not just the world, but the entire galaxy. No, not just the entire galaxy, the entire universe, into something smaller than the head of a pin. That would be wild. Then we assume that all galaxies have always moved with the velocities they now have. The Hubble law gives us an age, assuming that they've moved at the same speed with this 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Remember, this is the Hubble constant, 72, whatever the number is. That gives the age of the universe about 14 billion years. That means that 14 billion years ago, everything was in the tiny head of a pin. Wow, that's, that's kind of hard to understand. Now, the next question you might ask is, what happened, where did the pin come from? Astronomers have no idea. There's no answer to that question. They, that's conjecture. Maybe that leads to the discussion of religion and where everything came from, and maybe there is. Um, yeah. So this leads us to what's called the cosmic horizon. So if, if, the, if our assumptions are correct, that uh, Hubble's law is correct and everything uh, was once together, then the age of the universe limits the distance we can see since the speed of light is finite. And here's the question, you know, here is the, the, the a visible universe. What's at the edge of the universe? Well, you see, that's sort of almost a nonsensical question, if this is true. And that is, is that the universe is um, expanding itself, and space itself is expanding. So there's not like there's something outside here. This is all there is. Okay. So in a static universe, this distance is directly determined from its age and the speed of light. So we can kind of say, how far can we actually see? Well, one of the problems is the speed of light is only so fast. I mean, it's fast, but it's not only so fast. The maximum distance, the one we can see, um, is called the cosmic horizon. This is as far as so, yeah, okay? And the space within the horizon is called the visible universe. There may very well be more to the universe beyond, but we don't know. Yeah. Okay, how big is the universe? The distance to the cosmic horizon gives a rough measure of the radius of the universe. And for a 14-year-old universe, well, that's 14 billion light years. That's pretty easy. Yeah. 